Okay, so welcome to next, this next video in the uh, theory of probability. So in this video we are going to look at uh, the Cauchy distribution. So, Cauchy distribution, which is another very important uh, continuous distribution. And in this video, what we're hoping to do is be able to derive uh, the PDF for the Cauchy distribution from how we're going to define it. So we're going to see firstly what we want it to be, what the motivation for where it comes from. And then from that motivation, we're going to be able to derive its PDF. Okay. So the starting bit, the starting point for the der derivation of the Cauchy distribution is you start off with an abstract probability space and two random variables defined on this abstract probability space. So we'll say this is some abstract probability space here. And we have two random variables that say x and y, which are both random variables, so they're both ascribing each outcome in here real numbers. And uh, they're in fact going to map uh, they're going to map you onto the entire real numbers, but they're not, each of them is not going to be uh, a one-to-one -one map. Uh, so you're going to map multiple outcomes in here onto the same real number over here. And you've got another one here, y, which is again mapping you onto uh, the real numbers. And both of these are going to be standard normally distributed. So normally distributed with mean 0 and variance 1. And y is also standard normally distributed with... Um, with mean 0 and variance 1. Okay, and we're also going to say that x and y are independent, are independent random variables, which means that if I want to know what the probability, uh, so if I say, say want to know what the, uh, what the, um, uh, the um, joint random variable, if I can make the joint random variable x and y, which you could also view as a two-dimensional vector, uh, which is going to uh, map you onto the whole of R2. So it's going to ascribe each outcome an ordered pair of real numbers, so R2 here. Uh, so uh, every outcome in here is ascribed a real number by x, and every outcome in here is ascribed a real number by y. So basically, what we can say is map it onto that ordered pair. So uh, uh, this... Um, this uh, mapping here, which we called x and y, is going to map any outcome onto the ordered pair, which is x of s, so x of s being what the random variable x maps the outcome s onto, uh, and y of s, where y of s is the uh, outcome of um, the random variable y mapping s onto something. So here is s, here is x of s, here is y of s, and here is what we're mapping it onto here, which is the ordered pair x of s, y of s. Okay, that's pretty clear, I hope. Uh, so, uh, because they are independent, if we want the um, probability density function of this, the probability density function of x, y, as a function of little x and little y, so this is a function of R2 now, so you have your entire uh, plane here, which is R2, and to each ordered pair of real numbers, you're going to ascribe a, a probability density that the, um, that, the um, that, po that, that um, event occurs almost. It's, um, remember, it's not a probability, it's the best thing you can do. The probability is zero, uh, but the probability density is non-zero. So as you make it small, make a tiny little uh, square around a point, so let's say this is the point uh, little x, little y, uh, in R2. As you make the square smaller and smaller, you can ask what's the probability of that, and obviously it's getting smaller and smaller, but if you divide it by uh, the area of that square, then uh, you might get something that is, because the area converges to zero as well, the ratio might not converge to zero, and that's what we've got here, the ratio between the probability and the area over which you're taking um, the probability. Okay, and basically, the independence of these two things tells you that this is the uh, the marginal PDF of the random variable x as a function of little x times the marginal PDF of y as a function of little y. Now, that instantly tells you something very nice, because these two uh, marginal PDFs... Um, uh, this mar the marginal PDF of big X as a function of little x is just the PDF of the standard normal distribution. So 1 over the square root of 2 pi e to the negative x squared over 2. Uh, and the marginal PDF for y, so f y, big Y as a function of little y, is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi uh, e to the negative y squared over 2. Okay, so we have these two PDFs, and these are, are not zero anywhere. So if we draw them, 
uh, it looks kind of like that. They both look kind of like that. So it's not zero for any real number. Uh, so when you multiply them together, you get something that's non-zero everywhere. So basically, there is a pro non-zero probability density function that uh, this new joint random variable is any one of the um, ordered pairs of real numbers in R2. So that's nice. Uh, so if we multiply these two together, we get that the joint uh, PDF is 1 over 2 pi e to the negative x squared plus y squared squared, in brackets like that, over 2. Okay, so if we uh, want to draw, if we want to draw that uh, PDF as a function of R2, it would look something like this. If we draw our R2 on a slant like that and put our PDF up here, so let's say this is the joint PDF here, uh, then it's going to look something like this molehill that we've seen a lot of times before. So um, it will have a normal distribution. So if you if you just uh, take the cross section of it, if you um, imagine just looking at the plane, this is the uh, x y. If you imagine ignoring the y direction and just taking a cross section uh, where you fix y at being zero, then this is going to look like the normal distribution. It's going to look exactly like this because you're just substituting in y is equal to zero here. It won't look exactly like that, obviously, because you've got the 1 over 2 pi rather than 1 over the square root of 2 pi. Similarly, if you set x equal to 0, you'll get another cross-section, and it will look like that going along here. Okay, And basically, the overall thing is radially symmetric, because it, this uh, e to the negative x squared plus y squared over 2, that varies really. We could replace this, if you like, with r squared, where r is your radial distance from the origin. Uh, so uh, it's radially symmetric. If you ha put in the same radial value, uh, then you're going to get the same uh, probability density function out, basically. Okay, so it looks something like this. So, that's the setup for what we're going to do now. Uh, so we have these two uh, independent standard normal distributions. What we are now going to do is create a new random variable. We're going to create a new random variable. So I need this picture back up again. We're going to create, we're going to cause trouble now. We're going to basically divide x by y. So we're going to create a new random variable in which you take, in fact you could consider it as a direct random variable from here, where you take any outcome here and you map it onto a real number now. It's not an ordered pair of real numbers, it's a real number. And the real number you map s onto will be x of s divided by y of s. Now that's okay, that's well defined everywhere. Why? Because y of s is nowhere equal to zero. Uh, so every outcome has a non-zero y value. So I can construct x of s divided by y of s for absolutely every single, uh, every single um, outcome in here you like. Okay, so now let's consider it by looking at this. Let's consider how we would, the question, the problem is, how, what is the, how is this distributed? Find me the PMF, basically. Well, not the PMF. Find me the PDF of this, of T, basically, of this random variable. PDF of T. And basically, T is going to be Cauchy distributed, is um, what we're going to find. So we want to find that PDF of X divided by Y. Okay, so how are we going to do that, basically? Now, uh, we're going to use this picture here, because uh, if you... Um, Think about um, if you think about this. Firstly, let's um, let's um, notice one thing: that this can take on any real number you like. The simple proof is that um, y uh, set y equal to one. Just look at the points where the y value is equal to one, and then the x value can range over every possibility of the real numbers. So therefore, this can range over every possibility of the real numbers because if we set y equal to one, you'll get every possibility for x. So this does vary over all real numbers. So it's got a non-zero value at all real numbers. So non-zero at all real numbers for all um, real numbers. I'll just put there. Okay. Uh, so the uh, so what we can ask is uh, which of these points, which of these points in R two. So if we draw a picture of R two, all of the points in here. All of the points in this abstract probability space have a point in R2. So we could work this out using uh, by using this. Uh, so we use this one, and then from this one, we can work out the PDF of this one. Uh, so that's the way we're going to approach this, basically. So we're going to say, okay, here are, here's, our, um, here's our R2 plane. 
So which points are going to be mapped onto a certain value of t in here? So which points, little, uh, which order pairs, little x, little y, are going to be mapped onto a value x over y equal to some constant t? Well, if x over y is equal to some t value that we're setting equal to a constant now, that would imply that y is equal to x divided by t, i.e. it's some straight line that goes through the origin. So the all the points in this R2 plane which are mapped onto a certain value of t, so these are all the points that are mapped onto a certain value t, so all of these, if you divide x by y, will give you the same value t. So that tells us this sort of, um, this collection of points which are all being mapped onto the same value in here. Okay, so if we wanted to know what the probability density function of that value little t is, surely all we'd need to do would be to integrate the probability density function along this line. The problem with doing that is that it gets more complicated than that because you want to take the probability density function with respect to t. And basically, um, you want the probability density function, remember, um, Okay, how can I explain this? The probability density function, um, I need to do an example, so we'll get another piece of paper. So, uh, well, we'll turn this paper over. So, um, if I take uh, some standard normal distribution, let's say, and I um, have, this is a, our PDF for the standard normal distribution, what does it mean? It means you take a tiny little thing, d dx here, you vary this, um, you vary the random variable by a tiny amount, dx, well, basically, if you want the probability that the that, that event happens, if you want the probability that, let's say, uh, x is an element of um, some uh, point little x to little x plus dx, basically, that is approximately equal to the PDF of x evaluated at little x uh, times uh, the uh, tiny amount by which you increment, by which you alter it by. But the problem is that if we can, uh, we if we want the PDF of t, if we want the PDF of big t with respect to little t, what that would mean is that if I multiply this by some little dt, I want that to be equal to the probability that t is an element of this interval little t to t plus dt. Okay. But if we consider our line of points in R two, which were given a value, uh, which were given a value t. That was the line y is equal to x divided by t. Basically, if you increment by dt, what does that correspond to doing? That corresponds to turning this line by something. It corresponds by rotating the line. Because if t gets bigger, if t gets bigger, then uh, this is, then you're going to be divided. In fact, I've drawn it the wrong way around. So let's say this upper line was our original line t. If you make, if you go to t plus dt, then you're going to be dividing by a bigger number. So the line's going to get less steep. I know I drew it the wrong way around, but I've got it the right way around now. Uh, so you're going to increment, you're going to twist it round. So what you'd have to do, what you're actually asking, uh, when you multiply the PDF by dt, what you're actually asking is the probability that t is an element of this interval, which is this sort of wedge here. And that's the difficulty in this, that you'd have to adapt the integral uh, that you do uh, so that it accounts for the fact that the wedge is getting wider as you get further away from the origin. That's the difficulty, basically, in uh, calculating the PDF in that way. So we're not going to calculate the PDF in that way. Instead, what we're going to do is calculate the CDF of uh, the Cauchy district of this random variable t, big T, and uh, differentiate it to get uh, to get the PDF. That's easier because the differentiation will just take account of this automatically, and it's easier not to forget to do this uh, if you um, if you're if you're doing the CDF than if you're doing the PDF. If you're doing the PDF, what would be very tempting to do? The tempting thing to do uh, would be to take the line take the line y is equal to x over t and say, right, okay, so the PDF uh, of the big random variable t is just going to be equal to the CDF, the joint CDF, integrated along that line. So just integrate me this joint CDF 
along that line basically so let's say along this line L uh, so you'd, you'd obviously have to change the variables around you'd have to put in that y was equal to x over t and you'd integrate it over dx and you'd have to adapt uh, to get uh, the length of these little um, line segments um, but that would be the wrong thing to do because that would not take account of the fact that this is getting that the area over which you need to integrate is getting thicker as you go out so you'd have to if you wanted to do it that way um, you would have to take account of the fact that it's getting thicker uh, so we're not going to do it that way initially we're going to uh, consider the CDF instead so we're going to try and calculate the CDF first okay so this is a wrong way of working out you'd have to do this Okay, uh, so the CDF then, so big F, as, in fact, actually, this video has been going on long enough, we need to split it up, uh, so I will see you in the next part.